Hi everyone, this is a Gauss's Law problem. And Gauss's Law is used when you want to find electric fields from a symmetric charge distribution. So we know that the problem is asking for an E field at any given distance R. So that's going to basically split up our problem because we know that the charge distribution is different uh, inside of the sphere and then outside of the sphere. This is the equation for Gauss's law here, and basically we can kind of reduce that to Ea equals uh, Qn over epsilon naught. So let's start off by looking at Q inside, and we need to basically determine the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. And in our case, we're told that it's a uniformly charged sphere. So that should kind of be a clue for us to, to know that it's going to be related to volume. It's actually important to kind of note that we don't confuse the volume here where for A, because that's supposed to be the Gaussian surface area, where QN relates to volume. So let's take a look at when R is going to be less than uh, big R and that's because the charge distribution is held within the sphere and once you kind of reach the edge here on big R uh, it changes because there's nothing outside so this is the case when we're looking at R within the, the charge distribution and as you can see, I'm actually uh, substituting for QN right here. So, and that's related by this uh, relationship here. And notice I have the volume for the charge distribution. And then this is the surface area for the, for the Gaussian surface area. Once you start to reduce the equation, uh, you can basically get your electric field. Um, and for any given R, you're going to be given this electric field in this R direction. And remember that this is uh, up to big R. So for the next part of the question, it's we're going to look for when r, little r, is bigger than big R. And uh, that's going to change our equation a little bit. So for the charge density, it actually stays static for big R. Um, so when we put the Gaussian surface area for little r, uh, that's actually... Uh, can be bigger than big R. So they're not going to cancel out like in the previous uh, equation. Once uh, that equation is all reduced, we have the representation of E uh, in terms
terms of big R and uh, little r. And that's it for this problem, for when r is greater than big r.